welcome back to another episode of Valhalla. Um, so, last episode we made a couple drinks for this gentleman. I believe his name was something with a D. Uh, so I, all I remember is D. His, name, his middle name was D and we made a, a, a phallic joke about that. So we're going to go ahead and continue. Um, yeah, let's get into it. So, right. Uh, Donovan, that was his name. So, tell me, do you see many celebrities in this hellhole? Please stop referring to this place as a hellhole. If a place smells like soap and dog piss, I'm within my constitutional rights to call it a hellhole. I'm doing my best here, thank you very much. Who is that? Nobody important. Hey, I heard that. Don't be, don't be offended by what I say. Kid, I'm insulting the building, not you. You can think of it as a small hole in hell rather than a hellish hole, if you like. Charming. So, celebrities. Not really, at least not that I know of. Why? Well, to begin with, you have a serious VIP as a client, but I don't see you losing your shit. <laughs> Excuse me, do you know who I am? <laughs> I can only imagine someone walking up into a Starbucks and being like, Do you know who I am? It's like, uh, probably, but I'm, like, working a 9-to-5 job and barely getting paid, so you're not making me feel special, honey. And second, because I'm always up for gossip regarding famous people, especially the red carpet kind of famous, those folks, those folks people pretend to love but actually want to see fall from grace. Pretend to love? Fall from grace? Why do you think that gossip about famous people always sells? People pretend that they love celebs, but what they really want to see is their idols torn down to their level. You know, really humanize them. They want to see them suffer, to get their comeuppance for daring to be so much more successful than them. That is so dark. That is so dark. <laughs> nah, I think gossip is just something everyone enjoys, but nobody wants to admit to enjoying. You thought wrong, but even if you were right, it wouldn't change the fact that people love that kind of stuff. They want to escape their lives by living by living somebody else's. Sadly, I failed to see the appeal in that whole thing. What do I care if this guy I saw in some random movie was wearing socks with sandals, or if they're dating God knows who? Uh, you know who else wears socks with sandals? That's right, H3H3. H3. Hmm. Granted, socks with sandals is practically a public indecency, but still. Oh please, as a bartender, I bet you have a strong voyeuristic streak. Your kind always loves to hear that stuff. <laughs> Just like hairdressers, this sounds hypocritical coming from you. E even if that's the case, I don't sensationalize what people do. I don't make it more than that person you know from TV acts like a human. Sensationalize is the key word here. Just the other day I saw this committee judge bitching over what some girl was wearing to the store. No matter what you say, these people don't exist solely to entertain the public. But this problem exists because they're the ones cons constantly cultivating the idea that they're perfect and untouchable. Going to exotic locales, dressing in elegant ways, indulging in every luxury they can think of. All that just leaves the public craving for those little moments when they make a mistake and fall to their level. Can't say that's a lie, but sometimes the crowd just wants to see their human. Hey, that dude plays the nice guy is indeed a really nice guy. To be fair, the gossip articles don't help sensationalizing everything. It feels like they're instigating a behavior that shouldn't even be acknowledged in the first place. I feel like I'm reading like a... What's the word I'm looking for here? Like a really weird art speech? Not entirely sure. It just feels really weird seeing these words. I like your big words, eh, brat? Well, two can play that game of... Hmm. Hmm. Hey, you're a bartender, right? No, I'm a lab rat hell-bent on world conquest. Sarcasm wastes my time, my money, and your energy. Refrain from using it. Anyway, I just realized that a bartender like you must have heard quite a few stories in her career. Talk about changing topics. Maybe. Why? Wouldn't she like a column talking about those? I bet they would sell quite well. It'd be like that priest who published confessionary stories and then got excommunicated and lynched. People usually tell me all this stuff because they know I'm just a simple bartender. A personal stranger of sorts. We could have a we could have you ghostwriting. Half of our staff do that. They do? You don't really think Lana Smithy is just one person, do you? Figures. It, anyway, eventually the people come from the people from the stories would know it's them and blame me. Okay, yeah. 
Not only would that hurt us as a business, it would hurt me. I really like hearing clients rant about their lives. Oh, and it would hurt the clients too, I guess. Well, if you ever retire, that offer is waiting for you. Yeah, like you'll remember me two weeks from now. Sure. <laughs> it's like a... Uh, I remember when I worked in a... I remember the occasional person would come in and just be like, Oh, do I got a deal for you? You Look, take my card. All you gotta do is go to this place and we'll get you into a Ponzi scheme. It's like, yeah, yeah, thanks. Do you want another drink, Mr. Donovan? Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Did, did I say something wrong? Not at all. I just really like the sound of that. Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Is it really that special? At work, everyone calls me Mr. Dawson or Boss. Boss is just the title. It's too impersonal, cold. It is? <laughs> Mr. Dawson was my father and grandfather. It's too general. But Mr. Donovan, now that's more like it. They're referring to me, to the man in front of them, not to my family, not to my position as boss. To me. <laughs> Do you want your employees to get personal with you, Mr. Donovan? Oh, gods, no, but I want them to fear me. Not because I'm their boss or the name appearing in their paychecks, but rather because I strike mortal dread into them. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to make everyone call me that. Oh, yeah, you were asking something. What was it? Drink. Another one? Do you? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know what? Third time's the charm. Give me a beer. All right. Uh, better get him that beer. All right, so we're going to double it again. Oh, I made that wrong. It's uh, two, one, two, three, four, one. Oh, whoops. I'm going too fast. No need to go fast. We're all just relaxing here, you know. Serving this man some drinks. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. We got him his beer. One beer. Here's hoping I don't pass out. Cheers. Enjoy. Say, kid, does this bar have any investors? You didn't call it a hellhole? There was some bloke named Sven that wanted to give us money if we stamped his face all over the place. But aside from that, no. These bars are pretty much like any fast food chain, so there are no local investors. Why? Just wanted to let you know how lucky you bastards are. Investors suck harder than my first wife's mouth. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Those bastards think they're so important because they put their money in the company. Well, that's... I mean, you give me money so you can make more. Let me do my thing and I'll give you your money. But no, they have to stick their nose and start changing the silliest of stuff. What good is it to be the boss if you still have to work for someone else? You still have to answer to unions, the government, and those kinds of organizations, don't you? Yeah, but that's paperwork. Make somebody else do it. Call it a day. These losers ask me for meetings. They start talking about stuff they don't like. Stuff they found offensive. And there's always that one guy or gal that says, Hey, why don't you do what that other newspaper does? Recently, they told me that they needed more clicks. More clicks. I make sure to keep stuff spicy while still keeping production quality up. But it's never enough for them. Well, you know what? They want more clicks. I'll give them more clicks. I'll show them what happens when I do what they want and don't reject ideas. They'll know who the hell Donovan D. Dawson is. Should I be worried? Nah. At least he paid for before storming off. I wonder what happened with Sven, though. We never heard from him again. Jill! Yes? What the hell happened in that bathroom? That kind of mess usually requires you to have thumbs. Crafty dogs, I tell you. You'd think their short legs would hinder them. The, the ceiling, the sinks, the toilets, the vents. Wow. That really reminds me of my last job. <laughs> Shh, you wake up Briar Rose over there. I won't forget this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a client. Welcome to Valhalla. What can I... Big gut punch, fast. All right. What's a big gut punch? I want to give him a gut punch, all right. <laughs> uh, big gut, or no, it'll be gut punch, won't it? And he said big, so, oh, we need to put in 10 Bronson extract. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. To Flanner Guide with optional Carmotrine. All aged and mixed. Okay, it's supposed to mean a punch made of innards, but the name actually describes what you feel while drinking it. Bitter, manly, strong. We'll give him four. And there we go, gut punch. 
All right, uh, we'll serve it. Hopefully that's enough alcohol, but I don't know. Here. Hmm, you can actually do it then. Hmm, this crack house is a bar. Hellhole, crack house, good god. <laughs> All right, this music actually sounds like uh, music from Final Fantasy, or Final uh, Fantasy Star Online, which is a game I've been meaning to play and record about. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this has been an episode. We'll get to know this gentleman here. Uh, who's telling us our bar smells like dog urine and soap. Um, yeah. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.